quickly I want to review and uh, discuss DIs, which are basically uh, uh, direct inputs, uh, a DI output, kind of confusing, but um, your amps will have that, um, direct boxes will have that, uh, you're going to have it in preamps, so the better you know what your amp has or is capable of as far as direct outs, um, the better you're going to be able to uh, converse with your sound person and you'll probably get along a lot better and work together a lot better and more cohesively. So it's kind of like speaking the same language. So uh, direct outs come in many different sizes, forms, shapes. Um, the Mark Bass has a direct out on the back, um, which I have a picture of. I'll fly that in. Um, I also have my Aguilar DB750 which has a direct out on the very front. Um, and then I have a Demeter preamp, which has the uh, direct out uh, on the back. So uh, another helpful thing to know with these um, is whether they are pre-EQ or post-EQ. So the difference being, pre-EQ would mean that it is taking my signal before any tone shaping from the direct box or my amplifier or my EQ or my preamp. So pre-EQ is going to be from the output of my bass going right into or through my, my amp without a, touching the EQ or anything and going right out into the board. So basically it's an unaffected tone, unaffected by the EQ or any tone enhancing circuitry that your amp has or your direct box has. So that's pre-EQ. Post-EQ uh, means that it's going to, your bass tone will be affected by all your EQ settings, um, your gain settings, a lot of different uh, tone functions from your amplifier or your preamp or your direct box that will be sent to the front of house, um, to the main PA system. So it's a good idea to know what you have. So pre and post EQ. Pre means you're going right from the bass through the amp, unaffected tone, right to the house or to the PA system, post-EQ means you're actually going through the circuitry of your amplifier or your little preamp box or your preamp. So, um, another interesting thing to know is, um, for example, this Mark Bass head automatically, I don't have a switch on the outside that determines whether it's pre or post-EQ on the Mark Bass, on this little Mark head. Um, I don't know if it's a newer one, this is an original old one. Um, there's a little, you actually have to take it, take the, the chassis apart, and there's a little jumper that you switch. So it comes from the factory post-EQ. So basically any tone, um, anything I do with the tone with the EQ gets affected. So I just left it like that and it works fine. So the nice thing, the Aguilar Tone Hammer, which we'll be discussing in depth, it actually has a little switch that you can choose pre or post-EQ, which is really, really nice. Um, the other thing on my Demeter and on my Aguilar, there's a little switch that chooses pre or post EQ. I've stayed way too long on pre or post EQ, but it's an important function that a lot of people don't know about. Um, the other one is a ground lift. Uh, the ground lift is especially helpful if you're getting, uh, if you plug in your bass and you're getting ready to roll and you turn your sound on and you get a gnarly hum or you're sending a weird hum to the house. Uh, the ground lift generally you switch that little switch up or down and it'll get rid of the hum 90% of the time. So um, it's always a good idea to look for a direct box or a preamp that has those two pre and post EQ switches and a uh, ground lift. All right, so let's talk.